Here we're going to look at a nice problem that was shortlisted for the 1998 International Math Olympiad. So we want to suppose that we have an increasing sequence of non-negative integers. So we will denote those by a0, a1, a2, a3, and so on and so forth. And they satisfy the following property. So for all non-negative integers n, there exists a unique triple i, j, k, such that n can be written as a sum of elements from this sequence. We have a i plus 2 a j plus 4 a k. And I should say that all of these triples are unique. In other words, there's only one triple that gets you to every natural number, but it's possible for, to have non-distinct guys within the triple. Okay, and then the goal is to find A sub 1998. So like kind of a classic goal to represent the year of the problem. Okay, before we look at a full solution, I wanna give you guys some hints. My first hint is to think about generating functions. It's not exactly generating functions um, because generating functions in their traditional sense won't really work that well, but just think about how you could mold the idea of generating functions into this kind of ideal right here where you're summing the elements of the sequence. And then next you want to think about the convolution product for series. So whenever you multiply two infinite series, there's like a form that that product takes and you can write down the formula for it. Okay, so maybe try the problem with these two hints and we'll come back with a solution. So hopefully those hints were helpful. Now we're ready to look at a full solution. And the solution is really built from this fact that any non-negative integer can be written as a combination of elements from the sequence with a unique triple here. Now, if you were to just find a generating function for the sequence, and maybe add copies of that generating function together as such. So maybe you've got the generating function, twice the generating function, four times the generating function. That would be okay, but it would present a problem because there's no way to encode this uniqueness in here. You would most definitely be adding over the same triple more than once. But the way to encode this uniqueness is in, in here is by putting the sequence in the exponent of a function and then taking a product. So in other words, what I want to do is set a of x equal to the following power series. So it'll be the sum as m goes from 0 to infinity of x to the a sub m. So in other words, this is going to be x to the a0 plus x to the a1 plus x to the a2 plus dot dot dot. Okay, fantastic. Okay, so now what we want to notice is that we can encode this type of object if we take the product of ax with ax squared, that'll give us something like twice elements from the sequence, and then a of x to the fourth power, that will give us four times elements from the sequence. So just to uh, see that really clearly, let's maybe notice we have the following fact. a of x squared will be the sum as m goes from zero to infinity of x to the two a m. And then further, a to the x fourth will be the sum as m goes from zero to infinity of, a, of x to the four a sub m. So now if we take the product of these three power series, we'll achieve the type of exponent like this thing right here. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. So we've got a of x times a of x squared times a of x to the fourth. And here's where we wanna use the convolution product formula, or in other words, Cauchy's product formula for series. And for three series, it boils down to the following. So it's gonna be a triple sum. So we'll have the sum m1 goes from zero to infinity, and then the sum m2 goes from zero to m1, the sum m3 goes from zero to m2. Great. And then we'll have a term from the first power series, a term from the second power series, and a term from the third power series. So in other words, we'll have x to the a sub m1. That'll be the term from the first power series. Terms from the second power series will look like this. So that'll be x to the 2a sub m2. And terms from the third power series will look like that one over there. So here we'll have x to the 4a sub 
M3. Okay, great. But now we can simplify this quite a bit. Notice just using exponent rules here. So we have this triple sum, the sum M1 goes from zero to infinity. The sum M2 goes from zero to M1. And finally, the sum M3 goes from zero to M2. And now we have X to the A sub M1 uh, plus two A sub M2 plus four sub A sub M3. Great. And now here's the really important thing. As M1, M2, and M3 range over all triples, exactly one time they will give us each of these non-negative integers m. So in other words, there's exactly one combination of triples that will um, give this x to the zero. There's exactly one combination of triples which will give us x to the first power, one combination of triples that'll give us x squared, and so on and so forth. So by that argument, we have that this is equal to one plus x plus x squared plus x cubed plus dot dot dot. And that's going to be true for all non-negative integers, so that's going to be a power series. But by the sum of a geometric series, we know that that is 1 over 1 minus x. So we've achieved our first important formula. That is a of x times a of x squared times a of x to the fourth is 1 over 1 minus x. Okay, I'll go ahead and keep that, bring it up, and we'll move on. So on the last board, we argued that this product, a of x times a of x squared times a of x to the fourth was one over one minus x. It was that like geometric series expansion. Okay, so now what we wanna do is notice that similarly, we can have a formula for a of x squared, a of x to the fourth, and a of x to the eighth. And that's just kind of by replacing x with x squared here. So in particular, we'll have a of x squared, a of x to the fourth, a of x to the eight is equal to one over one minus x squared. Okay, fantastic. But now what I wanna do is notice that that will allow me to rewrite a of x in terms of a of x to the eight. And we can do that in the following way. Here we'll have a of x is equal to one over a of x squared times a of x to the fourth times one over one minus x, rewriting that thing. And then over here we can have a of x squared times a of x to the fourth equals one over a of x to the eight times one minus x squared. Great. So now what we can do is obviously just take the reciprocal of this second one and plug it in right here. And notice that is gonna tell us that a of x equals one minus x squared over one minus x. So that would be like this term right here over this and then times a of x to the eight. Here, notice I had to take the reciprocal of a of x squared and a of x to the fourth. But now this simplifies because here we've got a difference of squares. So this like factors as one minus x times one plus x. So we have a of x is one plus x times a of x to the eight. Okay, good. And then using the exact same calculation technique, I'll let you guys check all of the details. We can rewrite a of x to the eight as one plus x to the eight times a of x to the 64. And now we can continue this game. So in fact, we have a of x to the 64 is the same thing as one plus x to the 64 times a of x to the eight cubed. So notice here we have eight to the zero power in the exponent, eight to the one, eight squared, and then the next term will have eight cubed in it. And now we can substitute all of these iteratively into our expression right here for a of x, and we'll get a nice infinite product expansion of a of x. So we'll have a of x equals one plus x, times one plus x to the eight, times one plus x to the 64, times one plus x to the eight cubed, dot, dot, dot. Great, so in other words, it's the product as k goes from zero to infinity of one plus x to the eight to the k. Great, 
Okay, so now I'll go ahead and bring that up and we're almost done. So on the last board, we determined that if we used a generating function like technique, we could get a handle on this sequence. In particular, we defined a power series where the value of the sequence was in the exponent. And so in other words, our power series is x to the a0 plus x to the a1 plus x to the a2 and so on and so forth. Now, I want to point out that the fact that this is an increasing sequence of non-negative integers means that if we write it in this order, it's written in increasing order of exponents. So in other words, this is like the lowest order term, this is the next lowest ter order term, and so on and so forth. So that means since we have this product expansion of a of x, we can actually get values for an arbitrary um, a sub m. So let's maybe multiply this out and see exactly what's going on here. So if we multiply this out, notice the first term we'll get is 1, and that's from choosing a 1 from every binomial. The second term we'll get is x to the 1 power, just this x and the rest 1s. I'm going to write that as x to the 8 to the 0. Now the next term is going to be x to the 8, and so that'll be from multiplying this x to the 8th and 1 in all of the other choices. The next choice will be x to the 8 to the 0, in other words, x to the 1, and then plus x plus 8 to the 1, so that will be like multiplying this x with this x to the 8 and then the rest 1s. The next one will be x to the 8 squared, and then so on and so forth. So notice I've written this in increasing order of exponent. And so now what that immediately tells me is that a sub 0 is equal to 0, because here I have x to the 0. Then the exponent here will be a sub 1. So in other words, a sub 1 is equal to 1. a sub 2 is equal to 8. a sub 3 is equal to this 8 to the 0 plus 8 to the 1. a sub 4 is equal to 8 squared. And I want to point out here, the really important thing is that 4 is the same thing as 2 squared. And furthermore, 3 is the same thing as 2 to the 0 plus 2 to the 1. So we've got some sort of relationship between the index when it's written in base 2 and the value of the sequence in base 8. And in particular, we have this following claim, and that is if n, so that's just our natural number or our non-negative integer, it can be written as 2 to the k1 plus 2 to the k2 all the way up to 2 to the km, where all of those are bigger than or equal to 0, and that's a strictly increasing sequence of numbers. So in other words, that's our base 2 representation of n then a sub n equals 8 to the k1 plus 8 to the k2 plus all the way up to 8 to the km. And so that's what we're seeing from these first several terms, and that's actually what will happen in general. So I'm not going to prove this. It's not so hard. I'll let you guys try the proof and maybe post it in the comments. And now we'll just jump straight towards our goal, which is finding a sub 1998 which means we need to write 1998 as its base 2 expansion. So I just want to notice that 1998 is equal to 2 to the 1 plus 2 to the 2 plus 2 cubed plus 2 to the 6 plus 2 to the 7 plus 2 to the 8 plus 2 to the 9 plus 2 to the 10. And then by this claim, that tells us that a sub 1998 is equal to 8 to the 1 plus 8 squared plus 8 cubed plus 8 to the 6 plus 8 to the 7 plus 8 to the 8 plus 8 to the 9 plus 8 to the 10. And so we have our solution to this problem and that's a good place to stop.